Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is March 30th, 2024 and Barcelona just defeated Las Palmas 1-0 by a goal from Rafinha or a golazo from Rafinha. And, and with this victory, Barcelona take three very important points, putting pressure on Real Madrid, who have a difficult match tomorrow against Athletic Club de Bilbao. This is the post-match live analysis. We have a lot to discuss. So let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and this is the post-match live analysis where we analyze Barcelona matches as soon as they end and where I also get to interact with you wonderful people in the chat section by reading your comments out loud, answering your questions and get a discussion going. This is not to be confused with the Barca News' podcast which are on Mondays and Wednesdays where I share Barcelona news with you and I also get to interact with you which is also pretty cool and have the chance for me to interact with you wonderful people in the chat section. I haven't said that. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment. All of this helps this channel continue to grow. If you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise, especially for people in the US who cannot get that e commerce uh, outside of Europe, make sure you hit the kit bag. They carry everything that the Barcelona store does, sometimes even more. And if you want to place any sports bets, if you're feeling lucky, if you feel like you make some money, go to Bet Us. They're currently having a special offer for all new account signups. If you use my link, both links for Kitbag and Bet Us are in the description. Now let's start with the post-match live analysis, or let's start with the live analysis or the analysis, whatever you want to call it, because Barcelona just defeated Las Palmas 1-0 with a great goal by Rafinha and even also a great pass by Joao Felix. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But Barcelona just defeated Las Palmas, taking home three very, very important points, especially since Real Madrid have a very difficult match tomorrow against Athletic Club de Bilbao. So with this victory, Barcelona are putting pressure on the leaders. And I have to say, it was a good match. It was not a great match. It was not an excellent performance. It wasn't a bad one either. It was right there in the middle. If I have to give it a score, maybe a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6.5 out of 10. But Barcelona did what they needed to do, which was take home the victory. They did a lot of things good, but there was also a lot of bad things that the team should still work on and should improve on. And of course, horrendous refereeing by the referee. We'll talk about that later. But let's start first with Barcelona's performance. We had two completely different halves. The first half with Barcelona, a lot more dynamic, moving the ball a lot quicker, breaking lines with quick passes. I really liked what I saw during the first half. And that's what I've been asking from the team this whole season, which is to be able to break lines with quick passing. Because Barcelona might have not done that as much as I would like them to do. They did it more than in previous matches. But you saw how every time Barcelona did that, every time Barcelona broke a line with their quick passes, they automatically generated a very dangerous chance. Now, it was unfortunate. We had a lot of bad decision making in the final third. Uh, there was a lot of misses. There was a lot of offsides. But nonetheless, you see how much more dangerous the team is when they make vertical quick passes. Because this whole moving the ball from side to side it does not work. Modern defenses work as a block. They don't do man-to-man -man coverage anymore. It's more like the whole defense moves together. If you move the ball to the left, the block moves to the left. Move the ball to the right, the block moves to the right. How do you break that block? Is you either move the ball really fast, so when the block is moving really fast, you hope that someone within that block commits a mistake, they react too late, they move too slow, and an opening is created, or you break that block by those quick break, uh, quick passes that break the line, that penetrate the block. Barcelona did not do it as much as I would have liked them. They do it. They did it a few times in the first half, and we saw how many chances we created them. We created. Now, if we continue doing the same time and time again, every single match, we're going to generate a lot more chances that we've been generating, and we're going to score a lot more goals than we've been scoring. So that's what I've been asking of Barcelona this whole season. They were did it today. Again, not as much as I would like them to, to do it, uh, more than previous matches, and that's how we were able to create chances. So good first half for Barcelona, very dynamic, moving the ball quickly, breaking lines with the passes. And then a second half that was kind of reminiscent of the rest of the season. 
a very slow, sluggish Barcelona. They were kind of moving the ball slowly, and they were playing like the score was 10 to 0. Like there was no pressure, no, no problem. Eh? We're up, we don't care. And that almost cost us because we saw towards the end of the match where Las Palmas were creating pressure on us, and they could have tied the game. Now, we're lucky that Las Palmas this season have struggled a lot with scoring goals. They don't really have a goal scorer. Their best goal scorer is Munir, who was substituted uh, when their goalkeeper got a red card. So we were lucky that they don't really have a good goal scorer. But Las Palmas could have drawn because that's one thing we do need to work on, which is how to finish games. Barcelona are still struggling, finishing games. We're always struggling during the final moments, holding on to the edge of our seats, Praying to God that they don't score on us. Praying to God that the referee whistles. And this was not a match where we should have been struggling to finish the match. We were, it's Las Palmas, with all due respect to Las Palmas, but it's Las Palmas. It's not a difficult opponent. It's at home. And they were playing most of the match with one man down. This should have been a match where Barcelona should have scored a lot more goals, should have finished the game strong, but instead we struggled once again. And that's one thing that Barcelona really, really need to work on. Another thing that Barcelona need to work on is finishing the chances we create. Today, our final third was horrendous. Uh, Lewandowski missed a lot of shots. Joao Felix hit in the post. A lot of offsides. Rafinha scored a great goal, but he also had some pretty bad misses. So we really need to work on that. We need to work on finishing the chances we create. We need to work on finishing the matches, which kind of go hand in hand if you finish the chances you create. You're going to eventually finish the match or seal the match in a pretty comfortable way because you're scoring a lot more goals. But two things that Barcelona really, really need to work on. But like I said, they did the, do their job in the first half. I was very impressed with the quick passing, the quick movement of the ball in the way that Barcelona were breaking lines with their quick penetrating passes. But important thing is we won. We took home three very important points. Not the best of performances, a decent performance, a good enough performance. I'm going to chuck it to the fact that the international break just ended. You know, international breaks always affect players, uh, not just through exhaustion and fatigue because they just they pay, play like two matches within a week with their national teams, but also because it kind of interrupts the dynamic of the team, right? You're playing with your club, you're getting your everything's going well, you're working as a cohesive unit, and then you have to leave that to go play with completely different players in a completely different system and under a completely different coach against completely different opponents. That kind of interrupts the dynamic of the team. So I'm going to chuck this performance to that FIFA international break. Hopefully that's what's going on. Hopefully we can see Barcelona get back into rhythm because we have a very, very important month in April. We're playing some pretty important matches against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. We have a match against Girona and Montilivi. And of course, the quarterfinal match in the Champions League against PSG. But anyways, that's my initial sensations of the match. Let's do the chat section, then we'll talk about the lineup, we'll talk about individual players, and finally we'll end by talking about the absolutely horrendous refereeing that we witnessed today. All right, let's see. A lot of comments today. Um, I can never say your name because I can't read that, but he says, another referee scandal, who could have thought? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I will talk about that later, so I'm not going to say much. Um, Alvi says Laporta better open his eyes and realize Xavi is not it and maybe tie, uh, um, tie someone or try someone like flick up because I'm worried that because FC Bay are this rubbish at the moment, they might snatch him before us. Okay. I see what you mean. Uh, and I agree because I agree as far as moving quick, because look, I honestly think that I obviously think that Xavi is not good enough for Barcelona. Some people disagree, but regardless of what do you think, whether you think Xavi is the greatest coach ever or whether you think he's the worst coach ever, he's leaving. He has said that he wants to leave. He's not changing his mind. So Laporta and Barcelona need to act quick. They need to bring someone. That way that someone does not get snatched up by someone else, by another club. And so that someone, whoever it be, it can start preparing for next season. Uh, this whole like, oh, let's wait until the end of the season. Oh, let's wait until the whole team, how, how the team does. Like, that's not good enough. That's not being serious about something that should be very, very serious because choosing our next coach is incredibly, incredibly important given the financial state of the club where, you know, this project can make or break the club financially. It's also, you know, we have a lot of youngsters who need to have a good coach that can mentor them, that can shape them. So this 
choosing the coach right now is going to be more important than any other coaches that we chosen in the last 10 years. And La Porta and the club don't seem to be taking this seriously. They're like, oh, we're just wait, we're just wait. And it's like, no, you need to act on it now. Again, regardless whether you think Xavi is great or not, we need to act fast because Xavi has said over and over again that he's leaving. Jose Fernandez says, not in favor of keeping Joao Felix and much less that giving him the number 10. I agree 100% with you. Um, and you know, the thing is, what's most frustrating about all of this is that Joao is incredibly talented. And you see it. You see it when he does things like today's pass to uh, or assist to Rafinha. But it's just like it's like he does. It's like he hates being a football player. His work rate, the way he, I don't know, his commitment, the way he runs. It's like he doesn't even want to be there. Which I don't get it because it's honestly one of the most biggest wastes wastes of talent that I've seen. Which is a shame because again, I really think he's one of the most skilled players in the world. But skill alone is not enough. You have to work hard. Jose says, I agree with uh, Sampana, another referee scandal. I hope Barca challenges Gundogan's yellow card. I don't think you can challenge yellow cards. Uh, I think you can only challenge suspensions and red cards. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I think you cannot. But anyways, let's get back to the match analysis. We'll talk about the formation and individual players. But this is the formation that Xavier Randes elected for today's match. Of course, Ter Stegen on goal with Joao Cancelo and Kunde as the fullbacks. Inigo taking the place of Ronald Araujo. We know Ronald Araujo was released from the Euro wing camp without playing a single international match because he had kind of, of overload, um, a physical overload, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, I had some fatigue. So I'm really good. I'm glad that Araujo was rested today. I think he needed it. Inigo Martinez took his place. Pau Kouarsi starting. I would have liked to see Pau Kouarsi perhaps get some rest, but who would have replaced him, right? There's no way to replace him. Kunde's playing on the right. Christensen's injured. Araujo needed rest. It wasn't really someone to, um, to replace him there. Yeah, you could have said Faye, but I don't know if Faye is ready to start an entire 90 minutes uh, in first division. You know, when players make that jump from third to first division, uh, they're not physically in shape to handle the rhythm of first division. We saw that with Pau Kouarsi himself when he first started playing with the first team. He would only be able to play 60, 70 minutes, and then he would get start cramping up. We saw Hector Fort not too long ago, right before the break. He started cramping up too. Uh, so I don't know if Faye would have been able to play entire 90 minutes. Maybe we could have brought in Faye for 30 minutes and have Pau Kouarsi only play 60. I don't know. I'm not a coach. But I would have liked to see Pau Kouarsi get some rest. And then in the midfield, we had Ilkay Gundogan with Fermin and Sergi Roberto. Another player I would have liked to see get rested is Ilkay. But again, the question is, who would you put in his place? We have Frankie and Pedri are injured. Gabi's out for the rest of the season. So definitely a tough decision. And of course, Christensen, who's also injured. Maybe Christensen would have been able to take his place. But So hopefully Ilkay can rest next match against Cadiz. Uh, we'll see. And then our front line with Lewandowski, of course, Lamine and Rafinha. Another player that would have liked to see him rested is Lewandowski. And in this case, unlike Ilka and Kowarsi, Lewandowski could have actually been replaced by someone. We could have had him replaced by Vitor Roque, maybe Margu, maybe both with one playing 60 minutes, the other one playing 30. But definitely a match that I would have liked to see Lewandowski rested, especially since he played uh, all, 90, uh, all minutes with Poland in international break. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, but he will get his rest next season, uh, next match because Lewandowski did get his fifth yellow card. So he will be suspended for the match against Cadiz. I think he did that on purpose. Uh, he took a really long time to come off the field. I think he did that on purpose so he can clear his yellows because had he received a yellow against Cadiz, he would have missed, of course, a classical match. So I think Lewandowski did that on purpose so he can miss, miss the Cadiz match and be ready for the match against uh, at the Bernabeu. And Joao Cancelo has also gotten his fifth yellow card. Uh, so he will also miss the match against uh, Cadiz, but he will be ready um, against um, at, uh, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. So of course, my guess will be that Hector Fort will start in that left wing, uh, or sorry, the left back in the match against Cadiz, which will be nice to see Hector Fort starting a match and playing a full match. Um, not only where he is, Kunde, you know, now with uh, Cancelo being suspended next match, with uh, Hector Ford playing in Cancelo's place, it's like Kunde is going to have to play against Cadiz. And of course, you have to play him against 
uh, Real Madrid unless you decide to rest him and put Araujo in his place and with Inyo and Kubarsi covering the center back positions. But we do have a big problem also with Kunde, who has been playing every single minute since I think even before the new, the new year, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the lineup that Xavi uh, elected. Again, I would have liked to see a little more rotations, but maybe Xavi was thinking, you know, we have to stay in the competition, and that's why he got a lot of the starters. Now, some highlights. Kowarsi, once again, showing us he's an absolute map, an absolute class in a defensive position. He had a few mistakes here and there, but nothing that was too – that nothing dangerous where you said, oh, my God, he's just put us in a bad spot. And the crazy thing about Kowarsi, not only how good he is defensively and even with the ball, coming out with the ball from behind, but I think it's the his coolness. I think he is so cool under pressure. He is not phased. He can have three guys around him about to take the ball from him in the box. And he just handles it with class. He does not panic. He does not get nervous. He gets out of any situation like, like it's nothing. It's very, very impressive to see him do what he's doing at 17 years old. Good match by Inyo Martinez, by the way, too, who was very solid, which is why I said in yesterday's video with the news that Inyo was going to be uh, offloaded is that to me, it's a bittersweet news because I, I really think that Inigo is a very, very solid defender. I mean, he's been top five defenders in La Liga for the past, I don't know, five, ten years. Uh, so solid match by Inigo and Kouarsi. Um, Kunde didn't really have much work to do, and when he did, he did a good job. Same with Cancelo. You know, we, they, didn't, they didn't really have much work, and that's because Las Palmas weren't really creating much danger besides those last few minutes um, before the match ended. Kunduan, another good match right there in the base of the uh, as a pivot. Um, perhaps not his best matches. I wouldn't say this is like the Manchester City Gunduan that I saw today. I saw more of a Manchester City Gunduan against uh, Napoli and Atletico Madrid, not today. And I really think it has to do with his constant change of position. I think Gunduan, you know, you have him play one day and a pivot, then an interior, then a pivot again, then interior again, and this whole constant change of roles. I think it's a little bit affecting the game play of Gundogan, but nonetheless, he's world class. He still gave us a good match. None of his best matches, but nonetheless, a good match. Anyways, let's do a few more comments. Uh, talk too long before doing comments, and then we will talk about the rest of the players, including the substitutions. Okay, let's see. Where did we leave off? Mm. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Lobo says, Mo, why the ref hate us so much? So today almost draw the game. I don't think it was a hate thing today. I think it really is incompetence. Uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, I do want to talk about the referees. Um, let's see. What else? And Kill Bill says, hit the like. Yes, please, guys. Remember, the best way to support the channel is by hitting the like button. Uh, when you hit the like button, it recommends, it prompts YouTube algorithm to recommend the video to people who've never seen the channel. The best way you can recommend is just click that like. It only takes a second. It's completely free. And again, you will be helping me a lot. So thank you in advance. And Sampana says, I don't think we should have played Lamin Yamal. He looked tired on the pitch. Oh, good thing you brought that up because I completely forgot. Yes, 100% agree with you. I really saw Lamin today very, very sluggish. He was sluggish. He was slow. He looked exhausted. And understandably so. He's been playing you know, a lot of matches. He just came to a break where he also played with Spain. He ran a lot. And he's another player that should have been rested. I agree 100% with you. And ever since Mo, I think the referee tried to make things difficult for Barcelona. Rafinha's first goal was not offside. I agree. I'll talk about it in a little bit. And one more. But Niowa says, once again, the greatest player uh, in the what? What's ITW? Rafinha secure. <laughs> okay. He had a good match, but let's not start calling him the greatest player. <laughs> Calm down, guys. Anyways, let's get back to the match analysis. Well, and let's look at the rest of the lineup. Because Fermin, I really thought his substitution was premature. I think Fermin gives the team a lot of balance in the midfield, given his, uh, his contributions to both the offense and the defense. And we saw when Fermin came off, the midfield became a little weaker. And we saw Las Palmas start to penetrate a midfield a lot easier. Because I really, really think Fermin gives us a lot of stability and a lot of equilibrium in the midfield. 
again, given his contributions to both the office and the defense and given his absolute commitment, like I've said before, he is our other Gabi. He gives it his 200%, constantly running after the ball, constantly pressuring the other team. And as a result of his pressure, a lot of time he causes loss of ball on behalf of the other players. And he really makes the team just a lot more vertical with his passes. We saw him in that goal that was canceled, that was ruled offside. Uh, I mean, he starts the whole play with amazing pass that breaks all kinds of lines. And that's what Fermin gives you. And when I saw him being substituted at the 55th minute, I thought it was a little bit too uh, too early. And speaking of substitutions that weren't timely, Sergi Roer, really, really good game by Sergi. His passing was also on point, the way he was combining with his teammates, the way he was breaking lines with his passes. But he was substituted too late. I think by the time he was substituted, he was already tired. Because the thing about Sergi is... He, you cannot expect him to play in a full 90 minutes. You just can't. I think he's at a point in his career where he no longer can give you, like he could play the 90 minutes, but he's not going to give you a great full 90 minutes. He's going to give you a great 60 minutes. Then the other 30 minutes, he's going to be very slow, very sluggish. He's going to commit errors. He's going to be very late to respond or to react. And he should have been brought up earlier. Our front line, Lewandowski again. I wish I would have signed him rest. He missed several chances. And... Seeing that, I think he should have been brought out at, at the 60th minute. We should have saw Vito Roque play the full 30 instead of just playing 10 minutes. Uh, Laminia Mal, I don't think Laminia Mal should have played at all. I think we could have had, you know, I understand Ferran Torres was not fit. I mean, he is fit, but you can't play him 90 minutes as soon as, soon as he comes back from injury. So maybe we could have had Rafinha on the right and Joao Felix on the left and just rest Lamin. I don't think it was needed for Laminia Mal to play today. Because, and it was obvious on the field. He was extremely slow, very sluggish, very, very tired. I think Lamine should have definitely been rested. And then we come to talk about the MVP of the match, which is Rafinha, who had a good match. I wouldn't say he's the greatest player, like someone else, someone said in the comment section, but a good match by Rafinha. Um, he did a good job on the left wing. He scored two goals, of course, one of them being ruled offside. Uh, and his the, the goal that actually counted was one hell of a goal. It was reminiscent of a goal that he scored last season against Valencia. Same thing, making that run behind the defenders, heading it past the goalkeeper. Really, really great goal and a really, really great assist by Joao Felix. I know I talk a lot of crap about Joao Felix. I say, you know, he's not good enough. And I still think he's not because he's so lazy. But the pass that he makes it to Joao, Ra to, to Joao Rafinha. The pass that he makes to Rafinha is an absolute mind blowing, And this is what I mean when I talk about it's such a shame that Joao Felix is not as a hard worker as he should be or is not as dedicated because the things he could do with his feet is very, very impressive. And the fact that he doesn't work hard, it just it's just such a such a waste of talent. And it's very, very unfortunate. By a great goal by Rafinha, um, lots of good contributions, both offensively and defensively, constantly tracking back to help mark and then running back up to help with the offense uh, again good goal the second one the first one that was ruled out uh is a little bit of lucky but it should have still counted i don't understand why it was offside but we'll talk about it uh, in a little bit and then for substitutions like i said some of them came late some of them came early um draw felix's substitution came a little too early uh Vito roque was a little bit too late romeo should have came in for Sergio roberto a little bit earlier and that's about it as far as the formation and the players. And then let's do a few more comments and we'll talk about the awful refereeing that we witnessed today, which is, seems to become a pattern in La Liga. Well, what can we do? Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, that name. Since Pedri doesn't lose balls like Fermin does though, and against better teams will get punished. Um, I agree, Pedri is better about keeping the ball. Um, Fermin, I think, I think what's hurting Fermin a little bit is inexperience. You know, Pedri, this is what his third or fourth season in the first team. So of course he's gonna be a lot more polished as far as uh, those little mistakes that that newbies commit. Fermin Lopez, this is his first season in first division. Let's not forget that he was on loan in second division last season. He just came back this past summer from loan. This is his first official season. He hasn't had full continuity. He hasn't, you know, he's been playing a little bit more lately, but he hasn't been playing that much uh, overall. So these are the kind of things that, you know, that 
get polished with experience. You know, the, those sometimes he controls the ball a little bit too much where the ball gets away from him, or sometimes he loses the ball in a silly way. But that's not lack of talent or anything on behalf of Fermin. That's just simply is, you know, the inexperience playing its role. And it has to do with, again, it's his first season in first division. He hasn't been playing a lot. So it's understandable. And Marcus says, I think Barca is choosing games and strategic control and energy. Let's not forget that we have a few very important. Um, here's the thing. At big teams, which is what we should be, teams like Madrid, like Barcelona, like Manchester City, they don't strategically choose games. A team that aspires to win everything, you have to play every match the same way. Otherwise, you can't. If you start choosing nitpicking matches and maybe I'll play good here, maybe not there, you're going to be out of competitions because that's how it goes. Um, the teams who do this, the strategic control thing, is small teams. Small teams don't have the depth of bench that big teams have, so they cannot rotate. Uh, and even when they do rotate, the difference between their starters and their benchers is huge. So when they do rotate, the team gets like a huge dip in form. So those teams have to pick and choose their matches. And they do it as a survival mechanism so they can continue to be in first division. We're not a small team. We're not a mid-table team. We're a big team. There's no such thing as choosing your matches. You have to play, you have to win, you have to aim to win every single match you play in. Otherwise, how do you expect to win championships? You can't. All right, let's see what else. Uh, Samsona says, Shabby isn't bad. He's the best we've played since Luis Enrique days, but we need someone who can take us to the next level. Shabby can return later, but right now it's not the time to have Shabby for the long term. I agree with you. Uh, again, I've said many times, I don't think Shabby is the coach for Barcelona. Doesn't mean that he's, you know, the worst coach ever. Um, but I think he just came too early to the club. I think he should have listened, listened to Laporta when Laporta wanted to hire him for Barca Athletic, but he insisted that he wanted the first team or nothing. And I think he's paying for it now. I think if he would have spent a, a couple of seasons with Barca Athletic, he would have been a lot more polished and more ready to take on the first team. But, you know, I guess learn from mistakes and keep going. The Matrix says, I think we should grab Klopp now and let his second in command run the club for a year. And he can come back. I don't think that's how it works, my friend. You either sign a contract with the actual coach or you don't. You cannot sign a contract with his second in command. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's do a little bit, just a few more. Let's talk about the refereeing because what we saw today was an absolute – I don't even have the words for it, but it was horrendous. And I don't think it was necessarily on purpose or La Liga trying to screw with us. I think it just highlights that. And it's something I've said many times before, that total incompetence that exists in La Liga. I think Spanish refereeing is mediocre at best. A lot of these referees are highly, highly incompetent. And what makes the whole situation worse is that La Liga is not interested in fixing any of this. If anything, they keep digging their heels deeper and deeper into the ground. It's like they get criticized and instead of saying, okay, let's, let's analyze it. Let's admit there's something wrong. Let's analyze what's going on wrong and let's find a solution. They're like, no, they dig their heels more. And they're like, F you, we're still going to do things the way we like to do it. And that's even a bigger problem because incompetence always exists. But if you're not willing to fix that incompetence, then it's going to continue. And that's a bigger problem. And that's exactly what we saw today. We saw an incompetent referee that had no idea what he was doing. The first goal of Barcelona was absolutely not offside. Yes, when the play starts, Rafinha is offside, but he does not participate in the play at all. The person who gets the ball is Lewandowski, and Rafinha is not even close to him. He's not even obstructing anyone's view. He's not even obstructing a defender, nothing. Rafinha is standing by himself, away from Lewandowski, away from the ball. The ball doesn't come to him. He doesn't participate. He has absolutely nothing to do with that play. He had as much to do with that play as Ter Stegen had to do with that play because he was far, far from the ball. Now, by the time the ball gets to Rafinha, he is onside. He's behind a defender when the ball gets to him. Now, you might argue, well, maybe it was passive offside. It's not even a passive offside because it's not even Lewandowski who gives Rafinha the ball. It's the Las Palmas defender who passes the ball to Rafinha. So that automatically cancels out the offside. 
So that first goal was absolutely not offside. I don't know how these re these referees don't even know the old, the rules that they're enforcing, which again highlights the absolute incompetence of the refereeing. There was the yellow card in Gundogan where he gets tackled. So the player who tackles him, uh, Gundogan ends up stepping on him by mistake and gets a yellow card. It's obviously not a yellow. It's not even a foul. But that one I can, that one I can understand a little more. You know that play happens really quick. It's hard to see it unless you're standing right there looking down at the two guys. You're not going to be able to see that. So that I understand. But the goal, absolutely not. Because there's VAR for that. There's cameras all over the place that can zoom in, zoom out, slow it, slow the play down, speed it up. You can do the offside lines. You can watch it from all different angles. There's absolutely no reason why the referees could make such a huge, huge mistake in nullifying Barcelona's first completely legal goal which would have given Rafinha a double today instead of just one goal. But this is La Liga, ladies and gentlemen, full of incompetence, not just on a refereeing level, but on the management level with Tebas, the CTA, et cetera, who see the incompetence, but instead of trying to fix it, they dig their heels in and they act prideful about it and they refuse to do anything about it. So what can we do? Anyways, let's do a few more comments and then we will end the live stream. Um, I do have to do the news videos today. But Marcus says, Ralph Felix is just trying too hard to prove a point. He just needs to be himself and play football. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, he. I think I think it's a, it's a little bit of an ego thing too. Like you could see him against weaker opponents. It's kind of like he doesn't even try. Like, oh, I'm too good. Too good to try against these bums. Like, why am I even going to try? So I think it's a little bit of an ego thing too. Dr. Knight says, to be honest, I like Ralph Felix as a player. He missed poorly in this match. It was more difficult to miss than to score. Has he... Awesome confidence because he's benched most often. I think what happened with that one is it was just unlucky. I mean, that happens to everybody um, to miss a goal like that. I think it was more the pass by Kunde because Kunde really, really hits the ball very, very hard across the box. Uh, and those balls will come very, very fast with a lot of power. They're a lot harder to control when you're just trying to push them in. And I think that's why. And you can see us like Felix barely taps the ball, and the ball flies up and hits the and hits the post. And I think it was because it was coming with a lot of power. Uh, and it happens to everybody. I don't think it's a loss of confidence. I think what the problem with Joao Felix is just not a hard worker. He's a he's a very lazy player. He tries a fancy dribble, and if it doesn't work out, it's kind of like eh, somebody else will get that ball. And he just doesn't want to run, doesn't want to track back and help with the defense, doesn't want to do anything. Um, I think that's the problem, but I don't think it's a loss of confidence. I think the miss today is just something that happens. Uh, Amo says, let me appreciate many thanks to Barcelona boys for talk, for taking another three points. Amen. Three very important points. The pressure now is on Madrid and off of our shoulders for this week, of course. Jose Fernandez says, Sergi Roberto should have taken a shot on goal and he decided to pass up instead. Yeah, so that's another thing. When someone said, oh, Rafinha, the greatest player ever. That should have not been missed by Rafinha. He was, the ball was passed by Cancelo to the penalty spot. Rafinha was coming in full speed, facing the goal, not a single defender around him, and he misses it. And that's like the equivalent of taking a penalty, except even better, because not only are you at the same distance as that penalty and you're facing the goal, but the goalkeeper is completely off off to the side because he was on by his post and he's not expecting it. So it's even, it should be even easier to score in a penalty kick and he misses it. But Rafinha did his job. He scored a goal. He won us the match. He got the MVP. Well, deservedly so. So I'm not going to bang on him, but he should have not missed that. Emil says, this is what I always say. We complain about Spain's national team, but after two national laps, we still buy our young player on the field. Yamal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Crossbar Live says, good game by Felix, Rafinha, and probably by Yamal as well. He needs some rest. Uh, I would only say out of those three, good game by Rafinha. Felix, besides the assist, he, he, he really didn't do much. And Yamal, Yamal was exhausted to do anything. Um, of course, I'm not going to blame him. I'm not going to say, oh, Yamal sucks. We should sell him. No, he's just tired. So out of those three, I would only say that Rafinha had the good game, not the other two. Oh, and Sean says, if Xavi continues to overdo to overdo play Yamal, he runs the risk of destroying this young man's career. Looks like we haven't learned from what happened to Pedri and Ansu. 
I agree 100% with you. And we'll do one more comment and then we will end this. But Fumlani says, I was so nervous in the last minute. What I don't understand is when these players miss a chance, they just give up easily. I agree. I agree. We really need to learn how to finish matches. But anyways, that is all for this match review. I'm going to be posting a video, the news video later on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, for your likes, your subscriptions, your comments. You guys are absolutely amazing. I will see you in the news video. And as always, peace, cabars.